Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jeb Smith, real estate broker here in Southern California. And in today's video, we're gonna discuss the differences in the 2008 financial crisis and right now, the housing market of 2020. What are the differences? What happened then versus what's happening now? That's what we're gonna get into. When I post videos talking about market updates, what I do is I get a lot of people commenting, telling me that I'm wrong and that 2020, 2021 is essentially going to mimic what happened in 2008 with tons of foreclosures coming, a financial collapse, et cetera. Well, in today's video, what we're gonna do is a side-by-side -side comparison of the market of 2008 and the housing market of 2020. What are the similarities? What are the differences? And at the end of the video, if you stick around, I'm gonna tell you why I don't expect a huge foreclosure wave coming, why I don't see a market crash, uh, a housing collapse, because you know there are, are differences between what happened then and what happened now, and we're gonna get into it. But before we do that, I'd like to ask a favor. If you're new to me, new to my channel, it's all about real estate, whether it's market updates or helping you buy and sell property or just understand basic real estate terminology. So do me a favor, if you wanna stay up to date on all things real estate related, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. So let's start off talking about some of the things that happened in 2008 and then we'll compare them to what happened or what's happening right now in 2020. So back in 2008, we're gonna start talking about the loans, what, what types of loans were going on in 2008, and then we're gonna compare them to what we're experiencing right now. So back in 2008, what we had was we had a lot of people that were first off able to finance up to 100% financing. Now, if you're in the market today and you're trying to do 100% financing, it's pretty much impossible unless you have a VA loan or you are a veteran and you're able to use your your you know your benefits from VA. So, you coming into today's market, you actually have to put a down payment down in most cases. Whereas in 2008, it was very very prevalent for people to finance up to 100%. You could you know literally take, you know, not put any money down when buying a property in 2008 and, and finance the whole purchase of the property. Whereas now you have to come in with a down payment. In addition to that, at that time, a lot of the loans that were done in 2008 were adjustable rate loans. What is an adjustable rate loan? It's a short term loan, a three, five year arm as they may call it. Adjustable rate mortgage is an arm. So a lot of people at that time were getting three year arms, five year arms, seven year arms, and a lot of cases interest only on those arms. And what that means is that they had, they were only paying the interest on the loan for that period of time, at which case that loan adjusted after the five year period, then the rate would change. You may be in a position where you have to start paying principal in addition to the interest. And so that's the essentially the, the loans that, the majority of loans that were being taken out then in addition to negative amortization loans, which are essentially these loans that allowed you to not only not pay the principal on the loan, but you weren't paying all of the interest on the loan either. You were only paying a portion of the interest, so the balance on your loan every month was going up. And there were a lot of people doing these loans because they could get, you know, interest rates at the time were low, what we thought were low, and people were financing, you know, 100% financing in case doing these short-term loans. So they could afford a lot more property than they should be able to afford because they were only paying the interest on the loan, if, if that at all and they were able to get a lot more property because they were doing these short-term loans versus a fixed rate loan. Well, today in 2020, what we have is a lot of people that are getting financing are doing longer term loans, 15 year fixed, 30 year fixed. The difference between the market then and the market now or the loans then versus loans now is we don't have to worry about these 30 year fixed loans adjusting in three years or five years if the market changes, whereas back then, you know, these loans were short term and we didn't know what was gonna happen after three years or five years. And that was really the problem that that started the financial mess because what happened was as the market started to turn and these loans started to adjust, people could no longer afford the payments. They could no longer afford the, the 
you know, the house that they were living in. And therefore, you know, they weren't in a position to refinance because a lot of them did little to no money down when buying the property. So there was no equity in the property at that time. Now, another thing with getting the loan back then versus getting the loan now is back then there was no real uh, income asset verification, no employment verification. You know, you could say that you were, uh, let's just say, uh, a house painter and that you were making 20 grand a month when in some cases you weren't making five grand a month and, and the lender wasn't questioning that. And, and so you were able to get these loans and state your income without any verification. Whereas now, all income is verified you know, and, and jobs are verified and, and in some cases multiple times before the loan funds just to make sure the, the job security, the, in, the income security is there. So right now there's a lot of verification, there's down payments required, there's longer term loans versus 2008 when we didn't have any of that. Another thing, and also back in 2008, you had a lot more inventory on the market. So there were a lot more properties out there and it was a, a lot more even balanced market versus right now what we have is we have a, a really low supply of inventory and, and the sellers are really driving the market. Whereas back then it was more balanced and, and so the supply and demand was a lot more even. The market was still going up, but the, the market was going up because people were able to, to get into property that they couldn't afford and therefore they were bidding up property. Right now what you have is you have you know, while people are bidding up property, it's being bid up because there's not a lot of supply out there. Interest rates are very, very low, even compared to, to back then. I mean, rates are down 3% from where they were at, at that time. I mean, in 2008, we were doing loans in the five, 5% 5 range, 6% range on some of these. And if you were able to get an interest only, maybe it was a little bit lower, but now rates are in the mid twos in some cases, in the high twos. And so affordability is a lot, you know, it is, is more prevalent right now than it was back in 2008. You have less property to choose from, so you got a lot of buyers bidding up property because there's less to choose from. So the supply and demand equation is unbalanced at the moment. It definitely favors sellers just because of the lack of property out there. So that's why the market is continuing to move up right now. And then in addition to that, Right now, you have people that have equity in the property. If they've owned the property more than a year, more than two years, chances are they have equity because you know, they put a down payment down when they bought it. Chances are the property has appreciated and they've paid down the mortgage. So you've got people with equity in their property. Whereas in 2008, you didn't have the equity in the property because people were financing 100% of the property. They were only paying the interest on the loan. And therefore, when the market turned, it you know, it left these people in a position where they couldn't sell their property because they owed at least as much on it as they owed to the bank. Uh, and, you know, they weren't in a position to refinance to a lower rate because they, you know, again, there was no equity in the property. And at that time, rates weren't going down. They, they weren't, we weren't saved uh, like we were in 2020 with regards to, you know, the Fed coming in and, and, and lowering rates. To, to zero to buy up bonds and all of that stuff. Yeah, we, we did have them lower the Fed funds rate at that time, but not uh, as significant as what we're experiencing right now. Back then, in 2008, it was a financial collapse, right? It was, it was a global financial collapse in the market, whereas today, it is. It has to do with a virus. It has nothing to do with the financial markets, right? The financial markets aren't playing into what's going on right now. Now, there are a lot more people unemployed right now than there were in 2008, but it's because of a shutdown. It's because the government came in and said that, you know, these stay at home orders, you can't do business, you know, so on and so forth. And so the, the federal government is the one that put us in this position now versus 2008. It was, it was literally a collapse of the financial markets. Whereas right now the financial markets are thriving. The stock market is not back to where it was before pre-COVID, but pretty close. Um, and, and the stock market is doing very, very well. The housing market is essentially left, you know, is back where it left off in February. So those are the big differences between 2008 and, and now. And, and, and another thing in 2008, what you had was because you had very little equity in properties, people not being able to refinance them, you had this big foreclosure short wave, uh, short sale wave come to the market, right? Because 
people couldn't afford their property. So all of this property started coming to the market. There were very little protections in place at that time to help those people. Whereas now you have a lot of people that have filed for mortgage forbearance, right? Mortgage forbearance gives you the ability to take your missed payments and pay them at a later time in the future. Um, be, in, in, you know, as part of the CARES Act, they issued, um, you know, homeowners that have federally backed loans to be able to take mortgage forbearance and not make mortgage payments for up to 12 months, you know, if you were affected at all. Now, a large majority of the people that took those mortgage forbearances actually needed them. Um, there's also a large majority of the population that took mortgage forbearance that didn't need it. And so while you will have some people that, you know, that are coming to the end of their forbearance period that have to figure out how they're going to either repay the loan or get employment. You also have a large majority of the population that are just gonna pick up right where they left off because they were never actually affected to begin with. Now, let's talk about the people that were affected. My personal opinion is that a lot of the people that are unemployed or took mortgage forbearance you know, they have up to a year to, to essentially get themselves back on their feet. So if you took it in March, you essentially have up to March of 2021. And if you haven't taken it yet, you can still take advantage, if you will. I don't wanna say advantage because it's not the right word, but you can take, uh, do mortgage forbearance right now if you've been affected by COVID anytime. You know, say next month you're affected by COVID, you're not able to work, you're actually able to go in and ask for mortgage forbearance up to one year, up to 12 months. That would push it out until July, August of next year based on the time frame that I just used. So there's going to be these pockets of forbearance coming um, due or payable. And what happens is lenders have put a lot of things in place, Fannie, Freddie, FHA, VA, to allow people to take these missed payments, add them either to the back of the loan, uh, you know, and not have to worry about repaying the missed payments or some sort of repayment plan plan or loan modification. So there are things in place that are there to help people. Now, on the other side, you have potential, you know, evictions, foreclosures coming because of the moratorium that uh, was put in place to not allow evictions and foreclosures to take place. I personally believe that, yeah, there will definitely be people affected from this, but I don't think that's going to create this huge wave of properties to come to market, this huge foreclosure uh, wave to come to the market. Now foreclosures take months, sometimes years to happen based on the laws of that state. Here in California, you stop making your payments, you know, it takes three, four months for that process to start, and in some cases years to actually uh, finalize the, the foreclosure. Now, I believe that because of the way this happened with the government, there will be a lot of measures in place to help people, to help homeowners avoid those situations. A lot of people have equity. If they're in a position where they can no longer afford their property, you know, and the, the payment plans aren't there, these people are now in a position to sell their homes and not foreclose on them, like in 2008, when there was no equity, there were no other options at that time. Another thing is if, if, if property does come to the market, right now we have such an imbalance in supply and demand that it's not going to change our market for the foreseeable future. Are you going to see prices decline? Maybe in some markets, but we're not talking some huge 40, 50% decline like some people are expecting. We're talking five, 10% in some markets, which based on where rates are, you know, it's, it's not going to make this huge impact like some people are expecting when, when buying a property right now versus buying a property then. My guess is if, if, if prices come down, rates probably start to trend up. So the affordability, your, your, your affordability, you probably have a higher affordability now than you would in that type of market. But I don't believe that's the case because of the, the, the reasons that I've put in place. There are the, are the, the reasons that I just went over. And I'm sure you guys are going to have, um, you know, different thoughts and, and what have you on it. And, and I welcome them, but just come in with the facts, right? I mean, the idea that just because there's uh, forbearances going on, that doesn't equal foreclosures. Now, does it mean that uh, lenders have to work out repayment plans and, and potential homeowners have to find new jobs because of unemployment? Yeah, but that doesn't 
mean that there's a collapse in the market and that's my whole point behind this video. I do believe that there's a big difference in what happened in 2008 versus what's happening now. Um, but I will be the first to tell you that, you know, right now, I believe the government, you know, they are going to step in and help people as much as possible to prevent 2008 from happening again. That's why you're going to see an additional stimulus package. That's why you're going to continue to see, you know, things roll out in order to help homeowners. So that's the reason that I don't see 2008 happening again and why I still believe it's a strong market. Right now, it favors sellers. It's it's a good time to, to be a buyer just because of where interest rates are. It's a good time to sell property um, just because of the lack of inventory. Just make sure you're not you know, overpaying for property, make sure that you're not getting into bidding wars and paying way over what the property is worth if you're a buyer and sellers you know, price them at fair market value. That's how you're gonna get the most amount of money. But as always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you like the content, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. And as always, I welcome your comments. I'm happy to address them. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. We'll see you again soon. Have an awesome day, bye-bye.